your eyes.
may be seated. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I want to welcome you to First Lutheran Church on behalf of the family of Catherine Nelson to celebrate her very full life. I want to remind you that right after the service there is a lunch downstairs where you're going to have the opportunity too to share your memories, your eulogies, even your sermons with one another. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our sister Catherine, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. As the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 6, when we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a baptism like his, certainly we will be united with him in a resurrection like his. We'll continue with the call and response. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure and confidence of an everlasting hope, we worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. We'll continue with special music. Um, over the last year, I have been lucky enough to have Grandma live really, really close, and more nights than not, I would go um, up to her room and sing to her, and we sang all different kinds of things, um, old songs, new songs, radio songs, church songs. She never cared what I sang, she just wanted me to sing, um, but in about the last month, this was a song that she really enjoyed, it brought her comfort. And so, in trying to decide on a song for now, this one seemed appropriate. <clears throat> Sure. 
Let us pray together. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Catherine. We thank you for blessing us through her opportunity in life. In your great compassion, console us all the Lord. Give us faith to see Jesus in death and resurrection as a source of We'll continue with the readings, the obituary, the eulogy, and the gospel. A reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Catherine Lorraine Johnson was born on a farm in Clark, South Dakota in 1927. She was the eighth of nine children to Abel and Clara Johnson. She shared a close relationship with her siblings, Lester, Doris, Cora, Alvin, Pete, and Carol. Anton and Catherine passed away during infancy. Uh, many of her uh, Johnson family reunions were filled with fun and laughter. Growing up on the farm, uh, Catherine's early memories included sneaking into the kitchen with her sisters late at night to use up their parents' sugar and butter rations uh, and to bake cakes and puddings. Uh, after completing her education to become a teacher, Catherine taught in a one-room schoolhouse outside of Clark. During the summers, she worked at the local cafe where she was known for her really amazing chocolate malts. It was there that Catherine met her future husband, Rudy, and together they attended many Saturday night dances in Clark. Rudy and Catherine were married on April 19, 1947, in a double wedding ceremony with her brother Lester and his wife Helen. They filled their home with love and laughter, and they spent their early years together on a farm where she and Rudy worked alongside her older brothers, Lester and Alvin. Later, they moved to Watertown, South Dakota, where they had where their five children, Sandy, Pam, Rex, Tom, and Jody, were born. 
Catherine remained at home with the children while Rudy worked at Watertown Sash and Door. Despite her love of fancy things, Catherine never lost touch with her roots. She could be found in high heels and pearls one day um, and hunting boots the next. Uh, Catherine was proud of her Norwegian heritage and kept strong traditions like making lutefisk and lefse and krumkaka and rumagrout for Christmas dinner, something all of us cousins always really enjoyed. Rudy and Catherine uh, even maintained their relationships with several uh, relatives in Nor Norway and Sweden. Later, Rudy and Catherine moved their family to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where they were known for their social graces, and they always had something going on. They loved hosting friends and family. Uh, Catherine enjoyed playing games, uh, hosting bridge and mahjong. She had a zest for life and enjoyed staying active in tennis and bowling, hunting and golf. In fact, she even got a hole in one at the age of 80, something I think we can all aspire to. Catherine was an avid sports fan, always rooting for her kids and grandkids' favorite teams. She was always very involved in her church and was a charter member of chapter CI, PEO, in Sioux Falls, where she served in all leadership roles and was later honored uh, as a 50-year member. After Rudy passed away, Catherine moved to Good Samaritan Prairie Creek and later Touchmark, where she continued to live a very full life. She stayed busy with graduations and attending weddings and birthdays and spending time with family and close friends. Catherine moved to Marshall uh, in 2022 to be closer to her daughter Pam and son-in-law Tom, granddaughter Elizabeth and husband Mitch, um, and great-grandchildren Cora, Thomas, and Evelyn. She enjoyed outings to ball games, going to fishing spots, uh, visiting on the patio, attending church here at First Lutheran Church. Catherine Lorraine Nelson's legacy is one of love for her family, always being happy to host impromptu and planned guests, and having a very strong faith in God. She'll be deeply missed by all who knew her. We love you so much, Grandma. My name is Allie Berry, and I am the daughter of Jody Berry and Catherine's granddaughter. Today we gather here to remember and honor the life of a remarkable woman, our beloved grandmother. As we reflect on the memories we shared with her, let us also acknowledge that these experiences resonate with all of us, her cherished grandchildren. One of our fondest memories is spent with our grandparents in their beautiful garden at 3600 Lewis Court. We remember how they patiently taught us the importance of nurturing and cultivating life, instilling a love for nature and a deep appreciation for hard work. The garden was not just a plot of land, it was a place where we bonded with our grandparents, sowed seeds of love, and reaped the fruits of our labor together. Another treasured memory is the art of making pickles. We can still recall the distinct aroma that filled the kitchen as we stood alongside our grandma, carefully selecting the freshest cucumbers and transforming them into jars of delicious pickles. This tradition connected us to the past and showed us the value of preserving family traditions and the joy of sharing homemade treats with loved ones. Our grandma also had a mischievous side, and she introduced us to the game called Spike and Alice. Many hours were spent around the kitchen table, laughter filling the room as we engaged in friendly competition, trying to outsmart each other with strategic moves, and during those intense games, we learned the importance of healthy competition, quick thinking, and most importantly, the joy of spending quality time with family. Let's remember the delectable meals that our grandma lovingly prepared for us. The taste of her angel food cake and perfectly cooked pork chops lingers in our hearts. Every bite was a reminder of her culinary greatness and the genuine warmth she brought to our lives through her cooking. We experienced the simple pleasures of being together as a family around the kitchen table and enjoying these delicious meals and creating lasting bonds that nourish us. As night fell and the world quieted, we would lie in bed listening to the comforting hum of the radio. 
Those nights fulfilled with stories and shared moments of tranquility. The radio symbolized the peace and security of our grandparents provided, reminding us that love and warmth could be found even in the simplest of things. Today, as we bid farewell to our beloved grandmother, let us hold these memories close to our hearts. May they serve as a testament to the remarkable person that she was and the legacy she leaves behind. Let us honor her memory by carrying forward the values she instilled in us. The love of family and the importance of hard work and the joy of simple pleasures. Though our hearts may ache with grief, we find peace knowing that her spirit will forever live on within each of us, her beloved grandchildren. May we continue to celebrate her life by embodying the love, strength, and resilience that she so beautifully exemplified. Rest in peace, dear Grandma Catherine. You will always hold a special place in our hearts. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Peyton Berry, and I am also the daughter of Jody and Patrick, um, and a granddaughter of Catherine. So we are here today to celebrate the remarkable life of my beloved grandmother. As her granddaughter, I've been blessed with the opportunity to share countless memories with her. Memories that have shaped me into the person I am today. Grandma was not just a figure in my life. She was my guiding light, my inspiration, and a true friend. When I reflect on my childhood, I can't help but be overwhelmed by the immense impact Grandma had on me. She encompasses strength, love, and unwavering dedication to her family. Her influence was present in every aspect of my life and everyone who is here today. Grandma was a force of nature, a woman filled with spunk and spark that lit up every room she entered. She had a way of making everyone around her feel loved and cherished, whether it was a warm hug, a funny sarcastic comment, or a delicious homemade treat. Grandma had the innate ability to spread happiness and joy wherever she went. Her dedication to her family was unparalleled. She was the anchor that held us together, the glue that binds all of us in times of triumph and tribulation. Grandma's love knew no bounds. She never missed a birthday, a school play, a wedding, or a family gathering. As I stand here today, I realize that Grandma's legacy lives on within me and all of us who were lucky enough to know her. I have assimilated a lot of Grandma's traits and I feel her presence in me strongly. And that's something I am very proud of. Grandma, you are more than just a grandmother to me. Although I will miss your physical presence, I find solace in knowing that our love will forever remain etched in my heart. Today, let us celebrate the extraordinary life of a woman who touched us all. Let us honor her memory by embodying the same spunk, spark, and dedication she so beautifully demonstrated throughout her life. Rest in peace, Grandma. You will be forever missed and forever loved. And I have um, actually a card that she wrote me when I was 16. She wrote me in a birthday card, and it says, Peyton is sweet 16. She is, of course, the beauty queen. She is loved by us, one and all, even the boys on the basketball floor. She cheers them on, and don't you see, the boys playing hard for victory. Dear sweet Peyton, don't forget, Jesus is your best friend yet. Put your eyes on Jesus, trust in him. He loves you and will forgive your sins. Jesus has the best gift for thee when he takes you home to eternity. God bless and have a wonderful birthday. Love, Grandma. All right, I'm Olivia Berry. I'm Jody's youngest daughter, which means I'm Catherine's youngest grandchild, which also means I have some really old cousins and had a really, really old grandma. <laughs> when speaking to my friends when I was little, and even still now, I talk about my large family. I'd show off by telling everyone how old everyone was, how many of us there really are, and how we would always get together to celebrate several holidays, and most importantly, my grandma's birthday in the summertime. Everyone was always in awe of my recollection of memories we've made as a family. They always responded in, really, they're that old? Where are they from again? They really do that job? And how many are, of you are there? And lastly, that sounds like so much fun. I wish my family was like that. It's so cool to brag about my older cousin's success, funny stories, where they live, and how adorable their kids are. Reflecting back now, it truly is amazing how successful and close of a family we are. I unfortunately didn't get the chance to know Grandpa, and so wish that I could have, but truly have been able to see the impact Grandma has had on our family. She set the standards for how we could remain close, 
even if it meant calling unexpectedly and announcing whoever would stay at our home within the next week. She would give us an example of the importance of checking up on one another and loving each other relentlessly. She was not a complainer and taught us all how to accept the difficult challenges in life, which is probably one of the reasons our family is so happy and optimistic, even during hard times. Grandma Catherine created a strong family and we will all have the opportunity to pass down her passion of family to our kids, creating a lifetime of love. I think I can speak for us all. We're going to miss you, Grandma. Please rise for the gospel readings. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they will die, will live. Here is a reading from John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You may be seated.
That was beautiful. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, open up our hearts so that your word can penetrate it. And may the words that come from my lips and the words that come from my mouth be acceptable to you, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Isn't it wonderful? It is going to be glorious, she would proclaim. After I read from John 14th, which a portion was read today for the gospel. That was one, during one of my later visits with Catherine Nelson, where I read Jesus' promise that in our Heavenly Father's house, there are many rooms. And if Jesus goes and prepares a place for us, he will come again and will take us to be with him. I just read the text. She actually preached on it. In this case, I was the lector. Catherine Nelson was the preacher. And I needed to hear her sermon, not about some contextual or historical background on Jesus' statement or a dissertation on the original biblical Greek. This was more powerful than that. Catherine's simple sermon was taking Jesus at his word, that God has a place for us, and it is wonderful, and it is going to be glorious. A matter-of-fact proclamation that there is life after this life. It is real, and it is going to be good. This is what we celebrate today, that in our faith in Christ, death does not have the last word. Christ does, and it's going to be wonderful and glorious. This is the heart of the Christian faith, every Christian funeral sermon broken down to its core. Catherine Nelson, who I secretly refer to as the tentative one, not because she was tentative. She was quite matter of fact. But whether I would be able to visit her was tentative because she was always on the go. If she wasn't with the Odland or the Maxwell families, she might be in activity at Morningside. So she was usually scheduled as a tentative visit for the day. You never knew where she was. Maybe great-grandson Thomas checked her out to go fishing at Independence Park. I was informed that Thomas, who just entered middle school this past year, checked Catherine out, wheeled her from her Morningside uh, Apartment and took her fishing at Independence Park with no adult or no adult permission. <laughs> he knew what to say to get Catherine out. And Catherine told the employees at Morningside, oh, it's okay. So Thomas, you are either one of the most loving and devoted great-grandsons ever or possibly a felon. <laughs> no, I don't think they'd charge much over a misdemeanor on that one. But I'm just kidding. I... Your actions were well-meaning and a poor attempt at a joke because Catherine loved her outings with her great-grandchildren and her grandchildren. 
What I loved about Catherine is you didn't have to guess what she was thinking, she told you. And I appreciated that. There was a time allotted when I would visit for small talk, but prayer and Holy Communion were to her my main function. She always expressed in some way her appreciation of being able to commune. On more than one occasion, she would say, I just love communion. I wish I could take it all the time. Again here, she would preach the word of God to me after I would proclaim it to her. I would repeat the promise of Jesus. This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. And in her words, she would give thanks for what Jesus did and let me know how important it is to receive the body and blood and really proclaim what 1 Corinthians states when St. Paul points out, for as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And that is what she did when she said, I wish I could take it all the time. Holy Communion was the focus of the visit and other incidentals could be cut out if needed. This past Lent, I knocked on Catherine's door to ask if she wanted communion and I got the same response I usually did. Yes, that would be very nice. But this time she informed me, we need to get started right away because Pam is taking me to Stations of the Cross, which is a devotion reflecting Jesus' hardship from the condemnation of Pilate to his crucifixion and burial. I laugh because pa Catherine, Pam, and I are probably about three of only a handful of Lutherans who ever participated in this devotion, more popular with our Roman Catholic and Episcopalian brothers and sisters. This is one example of Catherine's openness to finding good and fellowship, particularly that which glorified Christ anywhere she could. Another example is that at previous living facilities, she went to chapel from Monday through Friday. I am blessed to have known Catherine. I had no idea who she was when she arrived at Morningside. Bonnie Doyle told me about Pam Odlin's mother and Elizabeth Maxwell's grandmother at that. And at that time, I had no idea because I am horrible with names. Eventually, I was able to connect Elizabeth as my VBS skit partner and Pam with that beautiful blue Mustang she drives. I would later meet her other children and her family would tell me some of her story. But how can one cover a service for a person who has lived life so fully? Outside her faith, which I observed firsthand, what was important to her was family. She came from a tight-knit family where she was close to her parents, her siblings, even having a double wedding with her brother, and likewise, her children were close to each other. Most families have dysfunction that passes down from generation to generation. And that's fine. We're human beings. We pass it down. But for Catherine's family, it was genuine love. She loved to serve her family at every generational level and after serving asked, what you wishing? Just in case she missed something. Friends and neighbors also benefited from this hospitality as simple gatherings could, gather, could grow to over 50 people. She grew up as part of the greatest generation, a term coined by former NBC news anchor Tom Brokaw the generation that came of age during the Great Depression and World War II. During the war, she was a teacher during the school year and worked at a cafe in the summer. Her interest ranged, as was stated in the eulogy, from setting up tea parties and large gatherings, including May 17th, Norway's Constitution Day, to walking the fields, hunting pheasants with the family, and would have a picnic of fried chicken she made herself. I didn't know she liked hunting until I read the obituary. She and friend Lee McNamara would shoot gophers from the car and then walk the fields for pheasants. I heard she could shoot as good as any. Had I known this, I would have had another subject to talk about, but she would have been about as impressed with my hunting experience as my ability to open her comfortable but complex folding chairs. Catherine loved to golf, as stated. She made a hole-in-one at 80. She was a cheerleader who could play basketball, loved to host, and she loved to play. She was active in church, part of a startup congregation, Kukuk Lefsa and Ludfisk, and proud of her Norwegian heritage. 
Catherine could live big and still be humble. She could accept her children getting a C, but when they would become valedictorian or receive other honors, it would be downplayed so they wouldn't get a big head. And she would say, well, everybody does that. No, Catherine, I hate to disagree with a Renaissance woman like you, but the whole definition of valedictorian rests on the fact that there is only one. <laughs> Catherine could shoot a gun. She was athletic. Plus, she loved pretty clothes and high heels. Heck, if she was born a couple decades later, she could have been one of Charlie's angels. In fact, Angel Cheryl Ladd from here on South Dakota was raised only 92 miles from Watertown, South Dakota. And while Catherine was 5'2 and eyes of blue, Cheryl Ladd was 5'3 eyes of blue. But there is no evidence that Cheryl Ladd could make a good chocolate malt, and there are live witnesses that Catherine could. Those malts and those blue eyes may have been what attracted a young Army Air Force World War II vet, Rudy Nelson, to Catherine. Rudy was taken by her immediately. And upon asking Catherine to marry him, she replied, that's a big decision. I'll have to think about it. <laughs> her thinking period must not have been too long. They met, dated, got engaged, and married within six months. Her five children would carry on the strong bonds of family that she had. These bonds would pass to her grand and great-grandchildren as well as touch many friends, neighbors, including special friend Elmer Burgers. And while Catherine's family life may have been, Norman Rockwell comes to life. Still, life is life. Rain shall fall on both the wicked and the just. As Catherine knew, on this side of heaven, this mortal body, does not yet take on immortality. On this side of heaven, the perishable does not take on imperishability. Catherine would watch her husband battle pancreatic cancer, yet at the same time, Catherine and Rudy would still make sure that Catherine continued living as well. After Rudy died, she would be diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and with all this, she could make sure she still had a tea time at 1 p.m. at the country club. She could live life even with mortality, looking her straight in the eye. And even self-reflect, one time saying she could have been kinder in life. Jody and Pam would be her caregivers as time tends to reverse family roles. But their family bond remains strong, as you could hear in the eulogy and the obituary. In the short time I knew Catherine, I saw her face two surgeries. The first, which was her second hip surgery, it almost seemed to make her stronger than before. The second surgery was on her heels, and that one left an infection that couldn't be treated. She was so accepting and handled each situation so matter-of-factly, it reminded me that people who understand there is something greater than themselves can handle life and death. Catherine knew neither life nor death, nor angels nor demons, nor things present or future, neither pancreatic cancer, nor macular degeneration, nor Parkinson's disease, nor even infection, can separate us from the love of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. I knew Catherine for a little over 195th of her life. You now can shell, tell stories of the other 94 out of the 95 parts. Irma Bombeck, humorist and novelist who was born three months before Catherine, hoped, when I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope I would not have a single bit of talent left. I could say, God, I used everything you gave me. I don't think anyone could perfectly use everything. But Catherine definitely would be a good example of using talents 
God has given us to the very best we can. At the risk of sounding cliché, Catherine's life was a life well lived. But through her faith in Christ, it does not end there. Now we have the promise of resurrection, that as Christ rose, we will rise as well. I am sure if someone asked Catherine her catchphrase, which was, what you wishing, which maybe somebody did, I am sure she would reply, to be home with the Lord. And it's going to be wonderful, and it's going to be glorious. Thank you for preaching the resurrection, Catherine. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please rise as we confess the words of the Christian faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess together. I believe in the Father, the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit. I believe in You may be seated for the Lord's Prayer.
Before we say grace and the, have the commendation, I just have a couple announcements. Uh, shortly after one, there will be a police escort uh, for those who are going to the committal or the burial in Sioux Falls. Um, the burial will be at 3 p.m. Lunch will be immediately following the service, so there'll be a line going directly down for lunch, and we are going to say grace now. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit upon us as we give thanks that Catherine is now in your loving arms for eternity. Comfort us in our grief, but let us celebrate that she is with you. Lord, we thank you for the food that we are about to receive. Make us truly grateful for the food and for the hands that have prepared it and for the hands that have served it. Uh, may it give us strength to share our memories of Catherine. And let us pray together. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Let us commend Catherine to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Catherine. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints of light. May God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. May God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.